All right, hello, hello. Uh, I'm gonna try and do this today. This will be the third attempt in three weeks to get to Leviticus 21. The phone kept messing up and ending my recordings. And whew, summer's flying by and I'm way behind on the projects. We got cats to take care of, the mice. I tore out all the insulation in the garage, power washing it so we can get rid of the bats. Of course, we got the chickens, the garden, everything. And then the two kids. Got both kids down right now for a nap. My wife is at a, she helps her cousins. They run like a little league. Uh, so she helps take tickets and sell t-shirts on the weekends with them. So hopefully they stay asleep through this whole thing. So this is Leviticus 21. All right. Rules for the priests. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron and say to them, a priest must not make himself ceremonially unclean for any of his people who die, except a, for a close relative such as his mother or father, his son or daughter, his brother or an unmarried sister who is dependent on him, since she has no husband. For her he may make himself unclean. He must not make himself unclean for people related to him by marriage and so defile himself. Okay, so... Like I said, I've already done this a few times, so I've already read the commentary a few times. I'll give you just what I perceive and then what commentary says. So, obviously, to me, this shows God's, like, understanding and his uh, compassion. So he doesn't want the priesthood. This is from the commentary of the educated researchers. A lot of the cultures around them associate themselves with death. You'll see with a lot of the rules, like the mixing of fabrics and circumcision and the rules for the priests, it's to cut themselves off from the other societies around them. They have a lot of death worshiping cultures around them. You know, the priests of their society are all about the death and handling the dead and talking to your ancestors and all these things. And God didn't want to be associated with that. So if you're a people, a group, who's like in the middle of all these other groups who are doing totally different things, and, but you're supposed to be priest to the world, a blessing to the world, you have to sh show that you, the core here, is not like the people around you. You have to distinguish yourself as different. He didn't want his priesthood, the sons of Aaron, to be associated with death. And that's exactly what the commentary says. And what I see is the compassion of God, that he, even though he doesn't want that, he doesn't want to be associated with these other religions, he wants his people to be set apart, he still has compassion enough to be like, well, obviously, if your mother, your father, your child, you know, your your sister who you were taking care of, somebody close to you dies, then you can, and by defile themselves, it means like touching or being in the room of a dead body. So you're going to mourn over your wife. Well, does it say his wife? I don't know. It says no one by marriage. But I'm assuming the wife would be okay. But anyway... That's what that one's all about, is to make sure that the priest line is not associated with death like the cultures around them. And shows God's compassion for saying, hey, those close to you, obviously, there's an exception. Verse 5. Priests must not shave their heads or shave their edges of their beards or cut their bodies. They must be holy to their God and must not profane the name of their God, because they present the food offerings to the Lord, the food of their God, they are to be holy. Again, this is a way that it's just distinguishing because this is what other cultures would do. We even see in uh, later on with Elijah and the prophets of Baal or Baal on top of the mountain or whatever. <clears throat> They're like cutting themselves trying to get Baal to light their sacrifice on fire. And uh, they do all these weird shavings and everything. That's how they distinguish themselves as the priestly line or the priesthood class or whatever. And God's like, no. I don't want my religion, my people who represent me to be associated with that. You're not cutting your bodies. You're not doing any of this weird shavings or anything. You know, the commentary even makes a comment like, there's nothing wrong with natural baldness. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for letting us know, commentary. So verse 7. So as you see so far, it's just rules basically, uh, not even so much as how a priest should conduct themselves, but just rules to make sure that they are not behaving in a way that would make them be associated with the cultures around them. They want to be set apart. <clears throat> Here's this is where it's going to get offensive to people. One of my 13 viewers. 
They must not marry women defiled by prostitution or divorced from their husband, because priests are holy to their God. Regard them as holy, because they offer up the food of your God. Consider them holy, because I, the Lord, am holy. I who make you holy. All right, so you can't be with a harlot or a divorced woman, you know. Uh, hey, I get it. I'm not saying that you can't be saved if you've been a harlot or that you are something wrong with you. You married someone who was has a past. You know, we see in Hosea, I think it is, who talks about his wife, you know, cheating on him and him finding forgiveness for her. And he's a big prophet in the Old Testament and uses that to represent the way that Israel has been cheating on God with other gods, but God's the one to forgive them. So, but again, God wants his priest class to be set apart. They, you have to understand, no one knows more about how the human mind works than God. We all know that you associate the church, the religion, the people, whatever, with its leaders, with the high priests. That's how you that's what you associate the religion with. It's not the common people. It's the priest class, okay? And they want to be seen as holy. And we all know this to be true. Everyone makes a joke. Where's the most judgmental place? It's in a church. So if you are a priest, if you're one of those who, you know, has the privilege to offer up the sacrifice to God and you're seen as holy and you're revered in this way, now it's getting undercut because everyone's going to be talking behind your back and not trusting what you have to say quite as much because of this thing. That's not right of them. It's not right of them to do that. But God knows that they will do that. He doesn't want his priest class to have that. You know, I mean, and you can say, oh, that's not fair. Then you're not a priest. It doesn't mean you're, you're a bad person. You're just not going to be one of the priests anymore. That's all that means. So I don't, I disagree. I think that there is qualifications. Like Big Bear says, you know, he's talking about RFK Jr. Uh, you're pretty much just the spokesman for America. So one thing you need to be able to do, you know, <laughs> if you can't do it, then hey, go do something else. <laughs> if a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, she disgraces her father. She must be burned in the fire. Again, I'm, it's going to offend people. All right. Again understand the culture and what's going on at the time you, this is why people look at god of the old testament is different from the new and he's so wrathful he's so angry first of all we know this from rec records this is very very seldom that this stuff actually happened again you need like three or four witnesses for all this stuff so it's like big Barry says it's like are you being a harlot publicly are you just flaunting it sort of thing now burn that's an extreme one but you have to understand what's going on. This is a traveling nomadic war camp of people who just came out of slavery in Egypt. All right. This is not like a society with police and infrastructure and everything set up. The priest class is going to be seen as the leaders. They're the one who has to carry on the following of the religion after Moses dies, right? They have to keep it going all through. Again, if your daughter's openly flaunting her harlot nature and with three to four witnesses to prove it and everything, that's totally undercutting the religion. So totally undercutting everything. Now, I did read already, but I do want to turn, see what maybe the commentary has some extra stuff on that one. I get it. I mean, I have family members who are atheists. They're, they're the atheists. They're like, want you want to prove God's either dumb which means they think he exists or that it's dumb to believe in him and they'll look at this and say how can you believe in such an angry God I'm like I think God understands it better like you ever like read history about uh you know there's always camp followers fo women following a group of uh a, a army or something if they're being a harlot spreading disease around causing men to fight over each other, death to happen, more violence is occurring because, you know, you sleep with multiple people, one's going to get jealous sort of thing. It is destroying the morale. It's already low because you're a warrior group moving around. Like, you can't have that going on. And throughout history, far more than in Jewish culture, women would have been hung or something if they were causing this to happen too much. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but anyway... 
well, I am saying God knew what he's doing. All right, here we go. This is on the daughter of the priest being a harlot. The holiness expected of a priest also extend to his household, his immediate family, therefore the daughter of a priest. It had a special responsibility to be pure. It would not be tolerated for her to be a harlot. And this probably especially has the sense of prostitution connected to pagan rituals and gods. Again, understand that these cultures around them, it's like orgies are how you worship our gods and all this stuff. And like ritualistic prostitution is a thing in a lot of these religions. So again, it's just basically don't associate with these religions don't that's why people even today you'll hear these hardcore people who aren't wrong hardcore religious people saying how like there still is only two religions monotheism and polytheism and we don't realize it but the polytheists these pagans not pagan like in farmer but paganism these religious pagans uh who worship through orgy and self-service and that sort of thing no god's like no no association with that uh, this was prohibited under the general laws of Israel, but special mention is made to, of it here to emphasize the holiness of the priest and his family. A priest who would allow a prostitute to reside under his roof would not be qualified to render decisions on behalf of the covenant community. The idea that a leader among God's people must lead his household well is repeated in the New Testament. You know, so I think if, you know, my name is Bible Following Bear, I'm a, obviously Owen Benjamin fan, and that's where I think the 10 to whatever viewers I get are from, doesn't that go with like exactly what we're saying? I've often said, especially before the Trinity thing and uh, where Big Bear doesn't want to talk religion anymore, I would comment that it's an accidental Bible study in a lot of ways. Because right here, the idea that a leader among God's people must lead his household well is repeated in the New Testament. Isn't that exactly what is in like almost every stream that Owen does? Anyway. Requirements regarding the high priest and the selection of priests. Verse 10. The high priest, the one among his brothers who has had the anointing oil poured on his head, and who has been ordained to wear the priestly garment, must not let his hair become unkempt or tear his clothes. He must not enter a place where there is dead bo a dead body. He must not make himself unclean, even for his father or mother. You know, the higher up you go, the more sacrifice that comes with it. Nor leave the sanctuary of his God or desecrate it, desecrate it, because he has been dedicated by the anointing oil of his God. I am the Lord. It seems pretty simple and straightforward. Just like there's more rules, they go to the same thing. Ways to separate yourself from other cultures. Special privilege or special responsibility for the high priest. I would assume you'd probably be older as well. So I wonder if, like, a lot of them were widowers or things like that. The woman who marries must be, the woman he marries must be a virgin. He must not marry a widow. Remember I said he be a widower, but a divorced woman or a woman defiled by prostitution, but only a virgin from his own people, so that he will not defile his offspring among these people. I am the Lord who makes him holy. I always wonder... You know, I, I, everyone knows you check for the hymen or whatever for being a virgin, but you know that's not like super accurate, especially, <laughs> it's funny because it's beyond the, the Jewish culture, it's just in general, like think Old England, medieval times or Renaissance, the only people really, really getting checked if they're a virgin before they enter marriage are these like royal class society people. And one of the most common ways for a hymen to break uh, outside of sex, you know, especially in those days, was riding a horse. And only the rich, royal elite, really, women would ride horses. So how many of them got blamed for something like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? My own wife, she's not here. Her cousin and her were, like, fighting, wrestling around for soccer ball or something. She got kicked in the crotch, and that's how it happened for her. So, I just wonder, like, is it, did they check for the hymen, or was it just more of, like, is there any, they just asked her and made sure there's no rumors going around. 
Should we look at the... I doubt the commentary is going to answer that question. So about the not uncover his hair or unkempt hair or tear his clothes. Israel's a nation, Israel as a nation we called to holiness, yet the priests were called to greater holiness. In turn, the high priest was called to even greater holiness. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I'm not going to read any more of that. It's basically what I said. So the common priests... Again, right here it says, or not to marry a harlot or a divorced woman, but it's only the high priest who's commanded to only marry a virgin. Again, it's just representing the purity of God. That's how people are going to see it. You know, God knows our minds the way humans work. They're going to look and judge unless you are representing yourself in the most pure way. Even then they'll look and judge, but you can't give them any excuse. And when your high priest is representing in a way representing you because that's what it is like the pope represents the catholic church that's how it goes you have to be as holy as can be as like pure as can be because you're representing god above So this is verse 16. The Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, for the generations to come, none of your descendants who has a defect may come here to offer the food for his, of his God. Oh, man. I'm laughing just because uh, Owen's recent stream making fun of disabled people and how like pregnant women should get a parking spot, better parking spot than them. <laughs> and doesn't this kind of remind you, though, like so many things in life it's just you're not fit to do i'm i'm not that tall but i'm not short but i'm not very tall uh but in junior high i really wanted to play center you know in basketball i, I was like i can rebound really well let me play center because i could jump and my coach was like no <laughs> he just kept to no you no you're not made for it it's not for you okay get over it you know bill burr does this awesome joke where he knows he's never gonna be uh the guy on the cover of a magazine who looks good he knows what he is and he has to be somebody who's funny because he doesn't have the looks know who you are and that's what this reminds me of uh again god you can call god judgy but he is the judge he doesn't want any impurities associated with him okay he doesn't want people who again this is something that the israelites definitely forgot in my opinion they're supposed to be priests to the world this is what abraham's covenant was a blessing to the world so they're supposed to be this light that shines that people see if people looking in are seeing like the hunchback from 300 movie as your high priest like yeah i don't know about this religion <laughs> you know that's what the outside people are gonna see but if you have a totally righteous you know without imperfection or as few as could possibly be symmetrical face <laughs> like oh this looks like a good religion you know <laughs> that's what they're supposed to be they're supposed to be priests to the world blessings to the world uh yeah so no one with a defect can be a priest in his line no man who has a defect may come near no man who is blind or lame, disfigured or deformed. No man with a crippled foot or hand. Sorry. <laughs> or who is a hunchback or a dwarf. That's why I was laughing. Or who has any eye defect. Or who has a festering or running sores or damaged testicle. <laughs> oh, I don't know why this is so funny to me. This reminds me of like stories. Like There's this kid who my brother was friends with in high school. He went over and stage in the gym he went and jumped up on it landed on his and smashed one of them it's like you're out <laughs> you're done can't be a priest i mean and <laughs> this synchronicities this goes to like i don't know he's talking about nasa being a religion uh aren't they pretty like strict with who they allow i mean isn't it kind of the same thing oh no he's waking up All right, I'm gonna go grab him. So let me finish this up. Anyway, you can't have a defect. He may eat the most holy food, God, as well as the holy food. Yet because of his defect, he must not go near the curtain. See, so he's allowed to be part of the group. 
He just can't go near the Holy of Holies. I'd love to talk about this more, but I'm going to go see if I can get him back to sleep. Uh, I enjoyed this a lot. God bless.